Welcome to another video of War PLS video series. In the initial videos, we are talking about some of the basic concepts that we need to understand uh, before we use War PLS for our data analysis. And in this video, we will talk about reflective and formative constructs. So if you have not understood the concept and the difference between construct and the items, I encourage you to watch uh, the previous video in the same list. So let's just talk about uh, the struct and the items. So you can, uh, for now, you can see that alphabet is a construct and A, B, and C can be taken as the items through which it is being measured. Uh, this is the way we are measuring this construct. On the other hand, you can see a, B, and C, and A, B, and C, these are the items through which we are measuring this construct. So let's just go to their root words. As we can see that reflective has a root word reflect. So this means this construct reflects all of its items. In other words, we can say that all items measure the same construct. For example, alphabet, A is alphabet, B is alphabet, C is alphabet. So each of these items have the independent power to measure, or we can say that this is equal to alphabet, this is equal to alphabet, and this is equal to alphabet. Because this construct reflect these items, all of these items independently. Now, let's just go to the other side and the root word is form. Why do we call it formative? That all items are the element of one construct. In other words, all of these items combined or uh, form this uh, variable or this construct. Let's just for the sake of understanding say that this construct is made up of A, B, and C. So now looking at this, if we can see that can we remove an item from these two types of variables or these two types of constructs. Now, if we remove an item from here, now let's look at this one and let's look at now this one. So A is removed from this alphabet, but still it does not alter or change its meaning. Why? Because B is also alphabet, C is also alphabet. So it doesn't make much of a difference. But here, if we remove one item, because we have already assumed A, B, C are formed with these three items, A, B, and C. If we remove one of these items, we can say that now it's not a complete construct. So here, we cannot remove any item in the formative constructs. But here, we can remove an item, so it's not going to change its meaning. Now, let's just consider uh, an example from research. Now, let's suppose you are trying to measure the customer satisfaction of a hotel. Here we are saying that I feel good about a hotel. This is one item. I am happy to use this hotel is another item. I recommend this hotel to others is the third item. Now these three items are being used to measure the customer satisfaction who just stayed or who stays in a hotel. Now this one item is measuring the satisfaction. This second item is also measuring satisfaction and third is also measuring satisfaction independently. Even if you remove this one and just measure, let's suppose this one, I recommend this hotel to others. Now this is only possible if the person is satisfied. So that means uh, in the reflective constructs, one item has the power to measure uh, the construct or two or three or even after removing some of the items, still this scale or this uh, measurement has the power to measure your construct. But now let's just suppose 
that service, staff, and room are the three important uh, elements of satisfaction uh, of a customer who stayed at uh, your hotel. So what we are saying is that the service of the hotel is one item. The staff of the hotel was good is another item. And the room of the hotel was good is another item. And we are supposing that even if we take one of these things out, one of these elements out, it will lead to mismeasurement. So can we remove an item from here? That you have to think about now. Removing an item from reflective construct is fine. It doesn't uh, change its meaning much. But removing an item from here will lead to mismeasurement of uh, the construct. Let's also talk about some of the major differences in the reflective and formative constructs. So each item reflects the construct, which means each item has the power to independently measure a construct. But here, all items form the construct. Even if one is removed, you are not actually properly measuring the construct. Here in the reflective uh, construct, each item having the same meaning and measuring the same thing. But in the formative, each item has a different meaning because it is uh, one of the elements of uh, that to construct. So therefore, it might have different meanings. Then one item can measure the construct. Here, all items are required to measure the construct. That is why in the reflective, items can be removed. But in the formative, items cannot be removed. Otherwise, it's going to lead to mismeasurement. So item removal will not make any difference. But here in the formative, item removal will lead to mismeasurement. So when we'll be uh, using warp PLS for our data analysis, we have to uh, give it uh, to the software that what kind of variable we are using. So for the uh, sake of understanding, what you can do is you can take any uh, scale, uh, take any construct, take its items, and see if you can identify which one of the scales uh, is a reflective scale or it's a formative scale. Um, as I said, that these are very important concepts before you start analyzing your data uh, through Warp PLS. Otherwise, you will not be able to understand and uh, maybe you will not be able to uh, do your data analysis in the correct format or in the required format. So this is uh, all about reflective and formative constructs. In the next videos, we'll talk about some more important concepts. Thank you very much.